Hi, this is Uwe, Delta Golf 2, Yankee Charlie Bravo. Yeah, the next generation of WSJTX Improved is ready for download. It is this 24 or 2.02 version. It brings a couple of new features as well as some bug fixes and detail improvements. In this video I like to show you the new features and uh, how everything works. So let's go in brief through the change log. The first new feature is or are these so-called bend buttons. If you go here to the view menu and uh, click on the bend buttons, you uh, get this new line with such uh, yeah, bend select buttons. This is, by the way, how it looks here with uh, the AL version with dark style. Um, so it looks pretty nice. Um, it is scalable, so yeah, it is quite useful. As the name suggests, um, you can now with one click go directly to the uh, main operating frequencies by mode. Um, the uh, program searches here your frequency table for the best frequency for the mode. You can uh, specify that uh, yourself because um, here, when there is uh, such an entry with uh, this um, character in front of, it means that this is a fr preferred frequency. And uh, the bend buttons bring you to this preferred frequency. You can define that here via the uh, Frequencies um, tab of the Settings dialog. Look, this is a frequency table. And uh, some of the entries have this uh, pref checkbox, uh, which uh, means that this shall be the preferred frequency for that particular band and mode. You can also add, by the way, some more if you just uh, right click on that and uh, say here insert. Then you can here define the mode uh, and um, you can type in here the frequency and so on and so on. And if you then would click on OK, you would have here such an additional frequency in your frequency table. So let's assume the situation uh, which we had until a couple of months ago that, uh, for example, in Japan, there was a different uh, frequencies for 160 meters. In this case, uh, you just uh, have to add such a frequency and uh, set the pref checkbox to that frequency. When you click on OK and uh, then click on the 160 meter button, look, it then brings you to that frequency. If uh, you um, go back to the um, international default frequency, you can do that. Next time you click on that, it brings you to that frequency. That means you have it now in your hands um, which frequencies shall be, um, uh, uh, yeah, which frequencies shall be selected uh, when you click on these buttons. Uh, it can be useful, for example, if you uh, are taking part in a certain contest uh, which uses certain special frequencies. You can do that now, perhaps even uh, put it here under a new configuration so that you can then just with one click uh, go to these uh, contest frequencies. It's quite useful. And uh, for that reason, I also upgraded my um, uh, band hopping uh, checkboxes to this uh, technology. Uh, so far, these uh, static uh, checkboxes here, these ones, um, were hard coded. Uh, this meant that uh, if you, for example, have the band hopping feature enabled and have here certain uh, checkboxes checked, so far, it brought you always to the international uh, band default frequencies. It was hard coded. But now I'm using for this uh, the same technology as I showed you for the band buttons. Now, if you, for example, have 160 meters FT4, uh, FT8 here enabled, it looks into your frequency table and would bring you to exactly that frequency which you have defined as your preferred frequency. It's quite useful. Uh, as said, uh, for FT8, of course, you could uh, use also these um, adjustable uh, uh, checkboxes here. Uh, if you would like to go to special frequencies, uh, this is of course especially meant for the uh, um, yeah, the expedition frequencies. But um, if you are for in 84 or also here for MSK 144, 
Um, you can now, for example, also specify your own frequencies where this band hopping function uh, should bring you to. Okay, and um, I thought it was uh, useful um, to add here another uh, small detail. Uh, if you are in FT8 mode and you right click on such a button here, it brings you directly to the uh, main the expedition frequencies. I think it's quite useful if you click left click here, it brings you to the normal frequency which you have defined. But if you right click on that, you can directly see if there is a uh, expedition active uh, or not. On six meters, by the way, uh, it brings you to this intercontinental frequency so that you can also quickly uh, see is uh, are there uh, such a, or is there such a sporadic E opening that uh, really this intercontinental frequency uh, is uh, in use. All right, uh, these were these two new features. I think it's quite useful. Uh, as I said, it is optional. If you don't like them, just uh, deactivate it here and it looks like uh, it was before. The third new feature uh, is about filters. We have now further options here and especially we have now a so-called ignore list. Well, the filters um, have become more and more popular and uh, I'm receiving from time to time uh, some more suggestions and for that reason I programmed here a so-called ignore list and also some more options. Um, and as, if, um, as uh, I now have <coughs> some more entries here, uh, I thought it would become too long for the view menu because so far all these uh, filters, uh, quick filter options uh, were available via the view menu. So I have now split it into two and created a new filters uh, menu here and you now find all the quick filters here um, below this um, filters menu. All right, what is the ignore list? Well, if you call CQ and uh, have here CQ first or CQ max distance or uh, max dB or min dB enabled, so let's stay for CQ first. And um, anyone who um, will answer you, of course, you would reply to. This is, of course, useful. However, if you are located on uh, some, uh, well, very interesting locations, Hawaii or whatever, um, then you have quite often the case that uh, certain stations are calling you and again and again and again and you really do not like to make QSO at this station or perhaps you worked him yesterday and he doesn't know and so on. And so far it was not possible to exclude such uh, stations um, from these uh, CQ first, for example, here. It works also, by the way, for uh, here, if you are in FT4 mode for this best S&P. Or also for weight in pounds, if uh, you uh, right click here on that, uh, have the weight features enabled, you can also react to incoming CQ. So for all these uh, three um, options here. Let's stay with CQ first. You can now put a certain call sign on the so-called ignore list. And this is what I like to show you how it works. So um, you have here, by the way, two new entries, um, erase ignore list and also erase wsatx.log, which is also a certain type of log. This is your normal log file. You shouldn't touch, by the way. But let's uh, start with an empty um, wsjtx.log file and also with an empty ignore list. Okay, and um, as always, I'm using here these um, um, two instances of WSJTX improved for testing, which are connected uh, via a virtual audio cable, so nothing goes over, over HF, uh, meaning that we can here simulate every QSO situation. Let's um, stay with uh, this uh, dummy cosine Tango Echo Zero Sierra Tango. And uh, let's, for example, call CQ. And, uh, but I do not want this Tango Echo Zero Sierra Tango station um, that I reply to that station. So what have, uh, have I to do? Um, I would then have to uh, type in the cosine here. and click on this new button, this ignore button. If I do that, 
uh, it brings you this uh, message box here. The call sign has been added to the ignore list. All right, so now Tango Echo Zero Sierra Tango is on the ignore list. Okay, so let's uh, start calling CQ with CQ first enabled. And uh, let this um, Tango Echo Zero Sierra Tango call me. Look, it is displayed here. But I am still calling CQ again. Why? Because this call sign is ignored. And this is because I have here uh, specified ignore stations from ignore list. Well, so let's remove it here and see what happens next. <coughs> Now it starts a QSO with this station because it is no longer ignored. You can have it, of course, still on the ignore list, but when this uh, checkbox here is not set, then uh, it will no longer be ignored and CQ first will start a call uh, a QSO with this station. Quite useful. All right. And then you see that um, when this station comes the next time, um, as we now have worked these stations uh, today, or yesterday by the way, um, this station, and we have here these highlight call signs work today or yesterday enabled, you see such a station highlighted like that, so you know this station uh, has been worked today. But you can also define here height stations work today uh, or yesterday, and you will see that this station is now no longer displayed. I will erase here the two um, windows so that you see now the message comes in here. And as we have now set here, height, action, height stations work today or yesterday, it means that you won't see such a station. This can be useful for um, perhaps some contests or so where you like to keep the overview and you really don't want to work a, a station a second time. So you have now these three options here. Ignore such a station, even hide such a station or just highlight the call sign worked today or yesterday or from the ignore list. The same options are available for the ignore list for stations work today. Um, here for these uh, three thing, three options. And uh, as we now have um, height stations work today or yesterday enabled, uh, it shows me here receiving filters on. I think you know that from the other uh, filters, if any filter is set, which uh, could have the effect that no, not all stations are displayed anymore, you see this here. You can, you can temporarily bypass that with this bypass checkbox. If this is uh, checked here, uh, you still see every station again. Let's uh, verify that here. And uh, it is displayed as receiving filters bypassed. Uh, so if you have this bypass checkbox checked, look, now it comes again, this station, which is here usually hidden. So this works pretty well. As said, where is it good for? Uh, for certain QSO situations. I would not recommend you to hide stations worked today or yesterday unless you really need that. It is intended for uh, um, contests. But it is quite useful to have this here always enabled, ignore stations from ignore list and also perhaps highlight call signs worked today or yesterday. I think this is a quite useful combination of settings. And as already said, if you like to reset all that, just erase the ignore list and uh, you start from uh, the scratch again. All right, this was the uh, third uh, new feature. Yeah, then we have a couple of uh, bug fixes and detail improvements. Um, one is perhaps uh, worst to be mentioned here, a fixed bug that prevented comments from being retained in the lock QSO window. Okay, so let's um, lock 
Manually here again this skewers O with uh, Tango Echo Zero Sierra Tango. Um, just uh, push here the lock QSO button, then this uh, well known window occurs here. And um, I'm talking about this comments line. And um, you can uh, here, for example, add some comments. Um, antenna 1, you can click here the add button. Uh, it, it is then added to a so called comments list or uh, antenna 2 um, or whatever you like to add here. And uh, once you have done that, you have here it in your drop down list. And you can always go back to that um, and use that or also um, add here something else. Uh, QRP uh, 5 watt or whatever you like to have. And um, now also this retain button works. So if you, for example, uh, have it like that and lock that with this data and you will lock it the next time, um, this comes again here. And uh, there was an error that uh, this didn't work before, but now it works. And um, this was uh, one of these uh, bug fixes. And uh, perhaps the final um, new function I like to show you here in this video is this one. This is um, especially for uh, EME enthusiasts. Uh, EME stations uh, quite often uh, like to enter the uh, manual um, frequencies if you are for example here on, on um, uh, 23 centimeters and you like to go to 1296.250 uh, you can now uh, do it um, a little more easier than it was before uh, if you have this uh, kilohertz entry without k here active restart is required by the way when you uh, change that then it allows the kilohertz frequency offset entry without a k uh, suffix, meaning you can directly go um, enter here 250. Then when you press enter, it brings you directly to that uh, megahertz dot 250 or 170 enter. It brings you to 107, um, 170 kilohertz or uh, 350 enter brings you to this. Uh, this is quite useful for EME enthusiasts um, if you like uh, to switch very quickly your frequency. So far you had, to, had always to enter for example 124k and then it of course still brings you to that frequency but when you have now this um, uh, checkbox here um, checked um, you don't need that. You can directly do that uh, via the, the keypad um, for um, on your on your keyboard for the uh, um, yeah numbers. All right, this was uh, more or less um, what I liked to show you. Um, one very last thing is here. I updated to this um, newest version of Hemlife. And it brings uh, one really cool new feature. Unfortunately, at the moment, it is only available for the uh, ESO FT991. But in case you have such a rig, uh, like me, by the way, it uh, is really helpful because now the uh, ATU is now uh, remembered. The status, if it is set on or off, is now remembered per band. And this is especially helpful in combination with these uh, band uh, checkboxes here, uh, uh, band buttons here. If you, for example, go to certain frequencies, I personally, for example, need to have the ATU on here for 60 meters. So I can directly go through the buttons and it is now remembered that uh, I have to set my uh, ATU on for 60 meters. So it is really a nice uh, help. So thanks a lot, uh, Mike. It's really a great feature. Perhaps we can um, um, support this function for more rigs in the future, but at the moment at least the users of the FT991 um, yeah, get this um, advantage. Okay, thanks a lot. This was um, the new, uh, what I wanted to show you. As always, the new uh, versions can be downloaded from that page. 73, I hope you enjoy the new features. This was Delta Golf 2, Yankee Charlie, bravo.